Welcome back to Switch to Linux. I've been watching a lot of uh, Brian Lunduke videos lately, so we're going to borrow some of his language, and I'm going to talk about five reasons why Linux rocks. So just got to thinking about some of the reasons why Linux is so much better than, than Windows and Mac as you know, as the businesses that I run here, I do have to run all of the operating systems. Of course, all my personal stuff is done on the Linux stuff. And so I get a chance to use the various operating systems throughout the day. But what I want to do is highlight the five reasons I think that Linux just totally rocks. Number one is options, package managers, desktop environments, code bases. This is what in the Linux world, this is a good thing and a bad thing. We have this issue of fragmentation, but in my opinion, I don't think, I, I don't want a single Linux computer. I don't want a single Linux distribution. When we get a single Linux dis distribution, we're gonna get a Windows Linux version. And it is the, the various options that create the fragmentations, and those fragmentations are what keeps the system pure. Now, I think, do we have too much? Yeah, there's a lot of things that are called distros that are simply some other distribution with a different theme or a few packages installed on top of it. That's not a distro. But then there's a lot of distros that have done a lot to really tune up what it is, work under the hood, have a lot of things that, that are running for it. You think about, uh, your, of course, your, your great-grandparents, you got your Debian, you got your Arch, you got your Slackware, and then there's a variety of things coming out of this. Of course, Ubuntu came out of, came out of Debian, and there's so many things that makes Ubuntu so much different than what Debian is. It's not just a few themes and things like that. So, of course, that's really used on a lot of different bases. So, yes, fragmentation is an issue, but it is the primary reason why Linux rocks is we have so many options. You want a Windows-type setup like I have? You got it in Cinnamon. If you want something totally obscure, you got that too. There's so many different desktops. There's so many different package managers. There's so many different ways of getting the software installed, so many different distributions that it gives us a lot of the options. So we can all be using exactly what we're comfortable with. And that, to me, is a really good thing. Number two, nearly anything can be done on your Linux system. Not everything. There's going to be a few little obscure programs that you're give, going to need either a Windows or a Mac device to get using. There's a few different odd pieces of hardware you might get that require a certain operating system. That's okay, but we're talking about the regular work for a regular person. You can get nearly anything done. Now, can you use the exact same software packages? Maybe, maybe not. In some instances, yes. In some instances, no. The question is, are we willing to learn? Are we willing to grow beyond? Are we willing to look at something and say, I need to edit photos, not run Photoshop? Because there are a lot of very competent programs that can definitely run head-to-head head -head with Photoshop that are all native on Linux. You have Krita, you have GIMP, there's actually a few other ones out there as well. No matter what you need to do, you can get your work done on Linux. I can do all the work that I still run on the Windows systems, I can do that on Linux, and oftentimes I do do it on Linux. The problem is I need the Windows and the Mac systems around to help my clients with things when they need help with stuff. And since I already have suites of software for the Windows system, I still run it until that computer dies. That computer will not be replaced with Windows. I already have the Linux replacement set up for it. So, and, and really I'm using that period of time to make sure I fine tune all of the changes, all of the, the software adjustments, all those differences that we're doing. Because the reality is nearly anything can be done on your Linux system. Number three, Linux is super fast to get set up and running. You can go from an empty hard drive to a complete up, up and running, functional, full operating system with the software installed that you need in a very short period of time. Now, if you've ever run a Windows system and had a system crash where you needed to reinstall Windows, you're not getting any work done for the next two days. You got to run Windows. You got to do days and days and more like hours upon hours upon hours of updates. And then you got to install your software. Then you got to update your software. It just takes forever. On Linux, you throw in an ISO. In fact, you don't even have to install it. 
You can just throw in an ISO image, run as a uh, live key, transfer your files over, get your work done and be done. I mean, it's that fast. But if you need to get something fully installed on an operating system, eh, it takes 20 minutes, maybe. And then you can transfer your files over if you have all your configuration files, all those settings, all those little tweaks that you've done that you really like. The vast majority of those can be saved to your home directory. Transfer that home directory back on over, drop it in, and everything is perfectly up and running in a very short period of time. Super fast to get set up, really no issues at all, and you can pick from a variety of different looks, layouts, feels, installations, and things like that. Number four, it is not collecting your private data. This is unfortunately something that the Windows and the Mac world seems to do, and we really can't turn it off. Even our attempts to stay on the ball with blocking out the telemetry, they work around constantly so that you just can't block the telemetry. And the fact of the matter is, I don't want all this information going up to one central server at one corporate overlord. That's not of interest to me. And for me, Windows privacy was that final straw that broke the camel's back, that thing that, that, that I saw Windows 10 coming out and saying there's all of this data collection going on, there's all of this stuff they're doing, and we really can't do anything about it, we really can't turn it off, there's no setting to, there, sure there's third party tools, I don't want to install a third party tool to get my main operating system to not be spying on what I'm doing. And yeah, there's instances that it may take the copies of the file names. It may even do some heuristic scans of your files. There have been cases where Windows 10 has deactivated programs in your computer because it thinks that you pirated them. These are weird things. And that's the type of stuff that I don't want my operating system to do. Linux does not do that. There are a few in applications you can install on some Linux distributions that will send some basic diagnostic data that will send... Um, there's even one uh, PopCon which will send um, the application list that you use to back to a server. I don't even like those, but it's very easy to uninstall those applications if you do not want them and they are on the distro you're choosing to use. So that's my number four. It is not collecting your data. And number five is full system control. Some of this takes a little bit more work, a little bit more deeper knowledge of the Linux world, but uh, if you spend the time to learn how to do that, you can set up your computer any way you want. You can have full control of your entire system. No issues, no problems, no challenges. That is a great thing. And for me, that first thing that really started to annoy me about Windows is when Windows 8.0 came out, they had this SkyDrive, it was called at the time. I'm like, What's this, Microsoft Cloud Storage? Yeah, uninstall that, and I did. But then when they rolled up to 8.1, it was permanently on the system and you could no longer uninstall it, eh, at least not without going into some serious PowerShell stuff. And uh, that's the type of stuff I'm talking about is I want to have control of my system. I know for a fact I'm never going to use Microsoft's cloud storage to store my data on Microsoft servers, leave the crap off my operating system. Well, if that happened to show up on Linux, I could just get rid of it. Even Peppermint comes with some Dropbox integration that I don't like. It comes with a few other little things. I just went in there, uninstall the integration tool. It's completely gone. Never bothers me again. Never shows up again. That is full system control, and that is why Linux rocks. So those are five reasons I came up with for why Linux rocks. Tell me why you think Linux rocks in the comments down below.